Hey guys, it's Kim, and today I'm going to do another trade paperback review. I feel like I haven't done one for a long time, so excited to jump back in and do it again. Today I'm going to be reviewing Volume 3 of Supergirl, Sanctuary. Now, I read this quite a while ago, so um, I did a quick flip through just to find out um, exactly the points I want to talk about in this review, because I did love this volume, and I suggest it to anyone before you start watching this review. Definitely a 5 out of 5 stars. Fantastic loving this series right now it's just so good um, so let's get into the review so basically we have three main story arcs in this book uh, the first one starts with Simon Teicher so as you know um, if you've read volume 2 or if you watched my volume 2 review uh, the the book basically ended on a cliffhanger where Simon Teicher was basically infiltrating Kara's Fortress of Solitude Sanctuary and it left it on that cliffhanger so it picked up straight away in this volume with Simon Taicho. Now if you don't remember who Simon Taicho was, he was the one that had captured Kara on his space station. She basically destroyed the space station trying to get off and um, his scientists and minions put him back together and he's sort of like this reanimated see-through jelly creature guy. That's the best explanation I can give you. But um, if you've read the book and you know what he looks like, there you go. But in this volume, it starts off with them fighting. He wants control of Sanctuary, but he can't get it because he's not a Kryptonian. So he wants to try force Kara to um, let it listen to him instead of her. He basically tells her that he's practically immortal. He doesn't need to eat, he doesn't need to breathe and he's super strong so there's really no way he can be overpowered by her so um, after a long length of fighting and not really getting anywhere Kara pretty much decides that Sanctuary can probably deal with this for her so Sanctuary encases him in this sort of crystal that holds him in place so as I said before he doesn't need to eat food he doesn't need to breathe so he's basically stuck there and Kara has said you know, you can stay there because you've been a naughty boy and um, I'll let you out once you think about your actions and decide to change. Which could be never, but I give you pros for the authoritative school teacher vibe there, Kara. Nice job. Now the second story arc we get from this book is probably the biggest one in the series so far. Mostly because it incorporates a lot of the Justice League and there's a lot of Clark Kent, Superman in the series as well. So this arc is called Hell on Earth and features a Kryptonian called Hell, ironically named. However, this Hell guy has basically picked a fight with Superman and Superman has been trying to defeat him. So he moves on to Kara because he's basically what he's ultimately trying to do is go back in time to save Krypton from being destroyed. So he's looking for someone to help him. And back when he was on Krypton, he was really good friends with Superman's father. So he automatically assumed that because he's the son of Jor-El, he would understand his case of trying to go back in the past to save Krypton. So this causes Hell to go to Kara to ask for her help. First of all, she didn't want anything to do with him. She thought he was some un another crazy Kryptonian guy saying, I'm sorry, I didn't get blown up. Can you help me not get the planet blown up? It's just, what is she supposed to think about that? She's got Clark running around now. She's got this guy running around. She had these weird creatures in the first volume come in that apparently were also from Krypton. It doesn't, it's, it's seeming to be a little crowded lately for Kara and I don't think she really wanted to deal with that at the time. But soon enough she does warm up to Hell and they come into some sort of romantic relationship which is really gross and yuck because Hell is a really creepy guy. He's been, apparently he's been through space and he's been scarred and he's sort of like, he's, I don't know, he just looks creepy. But Kara's very vulnerable at this time because she basically can't adapt to human life. It's impossible for her. So she basically decides she's going to help help because all he wants to do is go back to the past and try save Krypton, which is ultimately what she wants to see happen. The one great thing I saw in this was a fantastic plot idea where Hell actually gave Kara the gift of speech on Earth so that she actually was, um, I don't know if she was coded or anything, but he basically put English into her so she can now officially speak English. She didn't have to learn it or anything. It's now just a part of her brain embedded in. So I thought that was fantastic plot progression in that because I think she's been finding it very hard to be only able to speak to a few people on planet Earth and not 
able to branch out. So I think now that she's learnt this language, I think she might be able to assimilate better into Earth. So I loved that they did this. Now this arc may be a little confusing to people that don't read any of the other Superboy or Superman comics because I personally read uh, Supergirl before I read Superman for this story arc. I don't even want to touch Superboy. I'm not sure if I will in the future. But um, I started with Supergirl in this story arc and I, I basically understood everything that was going on. So um, I don't think I was overly confused. However, if you did want to accompany this with something else, um, Superman does go into depth as well into the Hell on Earth storyline because they are they are a crossover. This is not the action comic Superman but the actual current Superman and I found that actually when I was reading Superman after I've read Supergirl I found that I knew a lot more about what was going on because the fact is that Supergirl storyline is more connected to the um, story arc because on she's with Hell on a more emotional level and you can see what's going on behind the scenes there whereas Superman's just like this guy's come to Earth and he's gonna destroy it so Justice League we gotta kill him you know um, Kara's helping him so we should probably stop her that was basically it for the storyline in Superman but with Kara you saw why she wanted to connect herself to Hell because she she is just not it's not working for her on earth she wants to get out of it she wants to go home as anyone would so you can really understand this in this volume so um i definitely suggest if you don't want to buy because i know you can get um they have put together a hell on earth volume which you can actually purchase and get all the stories together but um i i don't think i'm going to get it because at the moment it's around 35 dollars which is a lot for um, the fact that I actually have most of them in the Supergirl and Superman volumes. So it seems a lot to pay for something that I kind of already have if I just wanted to add in the Superboy parts, but I'm not keen on Superboy. So, um, but if you are confused, you can always go out and buy that volume. Um, and that basically puts the whole arc together in one story. So throughout this arc, Kara is also fighting the Justice League. She fights the Flash, she fights Wonder Woman. You know, there's a lot going on here and there's a lot of action and I think this is, it's a really good arc to see because it's so focused on Supergirl and Superman. It's so focused on them, even more so maybe for Supergirl than Superman. And I love that Supergirl has this presence in this arc where it's all about, it's, I mean, the Justice League are all through this, but it's primarily about Supergirl. This whole arc wouldn't have happened if Supergirl wasn't here. You can argue that Hell would probably go through with his plan, but it wouldn't be as entertaining having him against everyone else because it's him and Kara against everyone else. Now, before I go any further, I do want to show you what Hell looks like and how creepy he looks. So that's him right here. So he's sort of been malnourished, or so he says when he was in space. His eyes are completely beady demon black. He's been scratched to hell, he's got scars everywhere, and he walks around half naked. I mean, you can't get any more creepier than that. So you can understand where hell's coming from. He wants to go back in time to save Krypton. But what Kara doesn't know, that everyone else knows, is that hell wants to use the sun, our solar system's sun, as the main power source to power his uh, spaceship that goes back to the past. And he needs, apparently, the sun's energy to do this and if he takes it it will destroy the solar system it will supernova it earth won't be there anymore and um he's trying to justify this by saying that if he goes back into the past and saves krypton technically earth won't have to be destroyed because he would you know um it would already still be there because he hadn't gone back but that's what i really hate about time travel because even so when it gets to the time that is current he will still go back to save Krypton so that doesn't really make sense at all and this is why I don't like time travel but eventually Kara finds out that Hell has been lying to her and that he will sacrifice so much just to get Krypton back he's going to kill this whole entire planet of humans everyone's going to die and she can't take this sacrifice it's it's you can't kill all these people 
to something that might not even work. It's too much of a risk. So she decides um, she's going to take matters into her own hands and swaps for the other team again. She's on the Justice League team um, and basically kills Hell with um, a kryptonite. Now she's been holding it for a long time so she actually gets quite poisoned herself. But she does eventually kill Hell and um, saves everyone, saves the Earth practically. Now before I move on to the next story arc, I just want to do a little shout out here. If you have watched my volume 1 review of Supergirl, then you will understand this, but I thought you guys would be interested to know. The Dinosaur Boobs is back. <coughs> Who is Dinosaur Boobs? You will know if you watched the volume 1 review. Please do so if you want to understand this reference joke. But they now have the male versions of these characters. Dinosaurs, dinosaurs on human bodies, dinosaur heads on human bodies, I can't deal with. <laughs> I can never, I can never deal with it, but basically they're in here. I don't even know why, but apparently they're like driving their spaceship next to this big giant thing that Hell is using to go back into the past. And they're basically like, oh shit, I'm not staying here, bye. And they leave. But um, I just wanted to do a little shout out for that. But I also wanted to mention this big giant thing that Hell's using to go back to the past. It just, it reminds me so much of if you've watched Naruto Shippuden, when Akatsuki are trying to kill and get the life force of all the, all the tailed beasts and put them in those weird eye things on that giant statue. Props if you know exactly what I'm talking about. But when the Hell on Earth arc comes to a close, Kara is still very kryptonite poisoned and she goes to Dr. Veritas, I think it's Veritas, Veritas, not sure, to um, get fixed up and eventually she does. She's still got a lot of kryptonite poisoning in her so she has to take it easy. Um, but as she's leaving she gets attacked by this lava monster or lava girl as she calls it um, and they grapple a lot they're battling they cause so much fury that the government come out to look for her and who comes to save her nobody but power girl yes we have a power girl arc in this series which is great though I don't quite understand what's happening here because from my knowledge of power girl she exists in a different earth um, so I'm not sure why she's in this earth it doesn't make sense because she does say in this story arc that she has been watching Kara ever since she arrived I'm not sure why pa Power Girl exists in this earth with Kara as well it doesn't really make sense to me but I haven't read any of the Power Girl New 52 things so I can't say why basically but this arc is a great one also because they put a lot of comedy into this what happens is Power Girl and Supergirl decide to go to uh, Kara's Fortress Sanctuary, which is under the ocean, and um, Sanctuary detects that there are two Karas and that one of them is a clone. And uh, Sanctuary basically says that Kara, Supergirl, is the clone, not Power Girl. And um, they're basically fighting with Sanctuary. He's trying to kill Kara. But just the dialogue from Sanctuary is hilarious. I love it when they have a comedic AI system. I think it's hilarious. And it just had, like, the best jokes. It was just... It was... It was so out of place that it felt great to have it in there because I didn't assume she would have... A sense of humor. I mean, can you picture Superman's Fortress of Solitude, Jor-El having a sense of humor and joking? No. It's just, I think it sets it one step above for this. So I love that they've not kept it so like cold and demeaning like they did with the Fortress of Solitude with um, Kal-El. And with this one, her AI system and her sanctuary is a lot more lively, a lot more fun. And I like that it's so different. And um, I loved this story. It was great. But um, I feel like this is almost one of my favorite arcs because of the way it's set out. So this arc basically ended with Power Girl going outside and freezing the whole fortress so that Kara could escape and get out of her fortress and they ended up flying in space. But I'm not sure if Sanctuary was actually destroyed when they did that, but it left it on a good note that, yep, Sanctuary might be destroyed, but Kara has more friends than she ever thought she could. I think she's warming up to Earth a lot more and I'm really excited to see where the next volumes take 
take her character. So thank you so much for watching guys, I give this volume a 5 out of 5 stars. Once again, I implore you to read this series. It is so good and I really love it. She's not just a side character, she's her own person. Please give her a chance and read these volumes. They are so fantastic. So thank you for watching guys and I will see you very soon. Bye bye.